Hi guys and welcome to another unboxing and first impressions. Today we're unboxing a new model from Sega Design called the X series. We already did the Z series with that, that beautiful blue planet model but this is another regular production like the Z but this one is called X because the construction of the dial reminds us of the letter X instead of letter Z, which was the previous version. Okay, so let's move this away. While the previous version was clearly inspired by Richard Neal, this is a bit more original, a bit more their take on a skeletonized watch, and quite honestly, just because of the originality of the design, I kind of prefer this. But let's see it in person and see how it looks. Again, it's packaged like that book, and there is this protective film so we'll have to cut it kind of carefully not to damage the thing underneath there we go finally managed to get it out so the famous Sega book design okay so we slide it out this is the other sleeve and here it is looking like a book once you open it again you have all the design awards they won over the years and then you, as you turn the pages you have your specs right here so this as you can see is a 44 by 48 millimeter watch comes with a sapphire crystal the movement is something they claim they've made but i believe it's some kind of a hanju or a seagull movement that's been modified by them like I said, sapphire crystal, and this one comes with two straps as well. So as you can see, you get a nylon strap and a rubber strap. Honestly, on this design, the rubber strap probably works better. So let's get that thing out. Let's move out the box and zoom in a bit. And as you can see, this is a very squarish looking watch. The, lug the lugs are actually the only thing that change the dimension between the width and the length. I believe it comes with a protective film so let's remove this one so fully skeletonized as you can see as I'm winding the movement you can actually see the mainspring getting energy but it is also automatic because there is a rotor on the back side let's just get this as well now once you see the fogging it's not inside the watch it's on the outside because the watch is pretty cold and here it's pretty warm now overall when you look at it through this camera everything looks pretty clean and pretty good. We'll see in the full review how it looks under macro but so far Sega has been quite well made at least the ones that I reviewed. This one comes I mean th these come in a variety of colors this one is black with orange accents and I kind of like it it's like a mechanic I believe this is how a mechanical G-Shock would look. Now apparently they even have some kind of a suspension system for the movement because it's made with two cages and something in between but we'll have that for the full review. I do like this combination although the legibility as you can see is pretty bad. I mean they did put these loomed pips at the ends of each of the hands but you do kind of have to uh, struggle to find them. Now, once you get the watch at an angle, you will see that the hands are actually polished silver while the bridges are black, so you do get to see them. But once you look at it like this, when you don't have an angled light, they do kind of disappear. Now, we'll just try to put it on my wrist, but 44 by 48, it should look okay, although a bit bulky, like I said, like a mechanical G-Shock. And then we're going to do a loom shunt, and that's going to be it for this unboxing and first impressions. Like I said, these can be had directly from Sega for I believe 359 to 500 and something depending on the on the variant, but on Amazon these go for as low as 289. So I'll leave a link to the Amazon for these because that's where you can get them the cheapest. And look at it go. The movement does have hacking as you can see, so pulling it to the first click does allow you to set the time and it stops the seconds hand and this has some kind of a rubberized material on the crown because it's incredibly easy to grip and it doesn't slip at all. I do like this. It looks industrial and like I said like a mechanical G-Shock. Okay just give me a minute to put it on the strap and then we're gonna strap it onto my wrist which shouldn't be a problem given the 
quick release pins that this comes with. Okay, let's do it on camera. I believe it's gonna be easy. So the 12 o'clock is here. So at 12 o'clock we get to put this one. So put the watch on the opposite side, get into one of the holes, then pull this, get into the second hole and that's it. This side is done. Let's do this one again. Find the hole, sorry, upside down. Find the hole, pull this, push it into the second hole until you hear a click and this jumps here. And that's it. So it was really like a couple of seconds of work through the camera. If you're not through the camera, and I'm wearing currently my PRT40, the best watch in the world. And as you can see, it has that industrial look to it. Like if this was mechanical, it would look something like this. Very cool. Let's strap it on the wrist. And here it is on my 6.7 inch wrist. <clears throat> it does wear a bit larger than, than the dimensions would suggest, but that's the case with all squared and the rectangular watches. Like this with this black color and these orange accents, <clears throat> it actually reminds me of the Casio G-Shock uh, DW or GW or whatever one, the 5500 series. And I'll put a picture somewhere around here so you can compare them, but it really does look kind of like that. That's the watch that I believe Schwarzenegger wore in the movie Running Man. Very nice, very cool looking design. Like I said, these kind of watches are not my taste, but this one does look slightly better because like I said, it reminds me of a G-Shock even with the color scheme. Anyways, let's do the loom shot and we're gonna call it a day. So let me just charge the watch for a few seconds. Put it next to the camera. Let the camera focus if it's able to because of the skeletonization and turn off the light. And there we go. And it doesn't have the markers loomed, but rather the bridges, which design wise, it does look cool, but it makes absolutely no sense when it comes to legibility and nighttime reading. The loom on the hands is actually okay, given how small the amount is. And this, I don't know, these loomed bridges kind of help you determine where the watch is showing approximately, but like real markers would have been more useful. But again, I mean, given the, the legibility, even in daylight, I don't think it's a, it's a bad thing. I mean, it's not a legible watch and you do not wear it to tell the time at a glance. You wear it as a conversation starter to show the people how the mechanical movement is working. And because you like the looks, that's it. You're not gonna be wearing this in like hard to read situations or life and death situations. Very cool. It does feel very massive. So it's probably stainless steel, although they have some titanium ones. Now, I don't know if just that's just the reference of the color or the actual movement uh, material used. I'll have that for the review as well. Anyway, it's a pretty cool watch, original design unlike the previous one, which was clearly inspired by Richard Mille. So definitely my favorite when it comes to regular production Sega design watches. When it comes to their whole collection, the Blue Planet is still my favorite. Anyways, that's it. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.